you know, there, there are a lot of people who immediately jump to gun control. But one of the things that is that is important to recognize here is that it was an armed citizen, a guy with a gun, a good guy with a gun, who showed up to stop the bad guy with the gun. Apparently, there were two good guys with guns who showed up to stop the bad guy with the gun. We still don't know the details of exactly what happened inside the church. Was anyone armed inside the church? Was there any security at the church? You know, I, I've been an advocate for a long time that places of worship should have armed security there. Uh, maybe that's just because I'm a part of the Jewish community. It's very, very common inside the Jewish community to have armed security. We have several security guards uh, at the place where I worship. Every major synagogue in Los Angeles has many security guards, specifically because of the threat of violence like this. But all of the people on the left immediately respond by suggesting gun control is the answer, even though the reality is that it was illegal for this guy to own guns in the first place. According to the U.S. Code, uh, there are restrictions already on possession of firearms by individual convicted of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence. This is uh, Title 18 U.S. Code Section 922 G9, the so-called Lautenberg Amendment in the fall of 1996, and it banned the possession of firearms by individuals convicted of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence. In this case, he was convicted of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence against his wife and his child. Uh, and uh, you know, the, the, the fact that he still had a gun demonstrates that just because there are laws on the books doesn't mean the bad people will obey them nonetheless. So it is, uh, it is a good thing that there were good people with guns there uh, to at least stop him before he could go to another location and begin trying to, to murder people there. Just a horrific, horrific event. Now, last week, we talked about whether it was appropriate for President Trump to talk politically about what had happened in New York City after a terror attack, and he was talking immigration. And you remember, the left said, how dare he politicize? How dare he politicize? Well, they could not wait to politicize this, as always. I mean, just like the Las Vegas shooting, they could not wait to politicize. So Chris Murphy, senator from Connecticut, who's sort of considered the gun control guy on the left after Sandy Hook, <clears throat> he issued a statement saying that lawmakers, quote, need to think about whether the political support of the gun industry is worth the blood. So this is just a lie, this idea that everyone who supports gun rights is, is beholden to the gun industry. I was supportive of gun rights long before we had any advertisers who were pro-gun. Uh, I've been pro-gun rights my entire adult life. Virtually everyone who's ever been on the right has been pro-gun uh, and is not being paid by the gun industry. The reason that the NRA is so prominent is not because the gun industry is paying the NRA. It's because there are millions and millions of people who are members of the NRA who join voluntarily because maybe they're afraid that the left tries to grab guns and suggest that guns ought to be grabbed every time something bad happens. And they think, well, if I were in that church, I wish that I would have had a gun too. Okay, here's the statement from Chris Murphy. Again, there's been no talk on the left, none, about why this is inappropriate, why he shouldn't be talking this way. He tweeted, uh, he, he put out a statement, said, the paralysis you feel right now, the impotent helplessness that washes over you as the news of another mass slaughter scrolls across the television screen isn't real. It's a fiction created and methodically cultivated by the gun lobby, designed to assure that no laws are passed to make America safer because those laws would cut into their profits. Again, cut into the NRA's profits. The NRA doesn't sell guns. They don't sell guns. How would that cut into the NRA's profits? If you banned, you know, people with misdemeanor violent crimes against family from, from owning guns, which we already have, would that seriously interfere with the, with, with the NRA in any way? Would that even seriously interfere with the profit margins of, of gun dealerships? Uh, I think not. He said, my, this is again, Chris Murphy. My heart sunk to the pit of my stomach once again when I heard of today's shooting in Texas. My heart dropped further when I thought about the growing macabre club of families in Las Vegas and Orlando and Charleston and Newtown who have to live their own day of horror every time another mass shooting occurs. Now, one of the things that I think is worthwhile noting here uh, before we even go any further and talk about some of the myths that are being purveyed by folks on the left with regard to this shooting. I think it's important to note that the left and right treat terror attacks and acts of violence in very, very different fashion. The left assumes that human beings are basically good. Human beings are basically good. And therefore, if you pass a law, most people will obey that law. Um, and that if you don't pass the law, basically human beings as restrained by the state are basically good. Uh, that there won't be a bad guy who breaks the law and goes out and gets a gun. And therefore, because human beings are inherently good, uh, we don't need to worry about somebody breaking the law. And the best thing to do would basically be for everyone to put down their arms. On an, on an international level, this leads to the sort of pacifism that led to the anti-nuke movement, the idea that if we unilaterally disarm, we will create a world without nukes. And you saw some of this kind of pie-in-the-sky stuff from President Obama when he was Senator Obama. The right thinks something different. People on the right tend to think in religious terms and natural law terms that human beings are capable of both great good and great evil, and that a bad guy with a gun is separated from a good guy with a gun by the, by, the fact that there's, the, by the fact that one is good and one is bad. They're not separated by the gun. They are separated by the fact that one is good and one is bad. And this is the problem is how do you group these people? So if the left sees two guys with guns, the left's first instinct is to say the guns should be taken away from both of them. The right's first instinct is to say, well, who are they? 
right? Is the guy on the right a cop? Is the guy on the right good? Is the guy on the right a preacher? Is the guy on the right a doctor? Is the guy on the left a, a, a vagrant with a violent history? Like, we have to separate by human being whether or not that person should have a particular capacity. The right tends to look to the vagaries of human nature when they, when they see sin and evil, and the left tends to look to the implement of violence. Now, I think there's a halfway position that there are a lot of people who adopt. They say, okay, human beings can be good, human beings can be bad, but there are some guns that are too dangerous for even a good human being to own. I think most people agree with that with regards to, for example, fully automatic machine guns, which have been banned in the United States, at least new sales of those since the 1980s. And there are a lot of people who, who feel the same way about, you know, everyone owning a tank. I think, that's re I think that's reasonable and rational. That's where you can have reasonable, rational discussion is which weapons are too dangerous that the, the risk outweighs the benefit, right? The risk outweighs the reward. But that's not the conversation the left wants to have. The left wants to have the conversation basically that all guns are bad because the same exact weapon that was used to gun down these people at the church was probably used by one of the civilians in order to fire at the bad guy running away from the scene, right? The AR, the, uh, the, the Armalite rifle, is the, is the most commonly used rifle in the United States. Okay, it's not, AR does not stand for assault rifle. Uh, and I think that it's important to note all this because you have to make a decision as a human being. Are you worried more about the character of the people that we produce in the United States? Or are you worried more about the capacity of, of people of any stripe to get weapons like an AR? I'm not particularly worried about me owning an AR or my friends at the office owning an AR or millions of people owning an AR. I am worried about somebody who's been convicted of misdemeanor domestic violence owning an AR, a handgun, a knife, or, or a toothpick. And I think all of these things are dangerous.